Hello, uh, welcome. We call our little gathering for conversation uh, Story Matters. What we're trying to say is every story matters, your story, our story. And today we have uh, Ruth Kilbert with us. And Ruth has uh, been telling stories, and we have an opportunity, the two of us, once a month, uh, over at Project Independence to engage in an hour called Story Sharing. And that's an awful lot of fun with, uh, with the folks who come to Project Independence. But uh, let me uh, let Ruth tell a little bit about herself to begin with. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I did not have storytelling in my life, in my background. My parents were not storytellers, my family. Um, so I came into storytelling really as the art of storytelling because I was a school librarian, elementary school hmm. uh, at the time, and I, of course, was reading books to children, and it dawned on me that they had to always see the picture in the book, and I was wanting them to use their imaginations. And I just was lucky enough to hear a storyteller and thought to myself, now that is really what I would like to do. And so that's how I got into storytelling and really learned the process of learning a story. Of course, as a librarian, I had always been surrounded by books. And as a child, I was always surrounded by books. I loved to read. And um, folk tales were the most obvious way for me. And I had uh, an elementary library that was filled with all those wonderful folk tales. Uh, a whole set of folk tales from ver various countries. And um, I just poured myself into that and found that it was something I had um, wanted to do or didn't know I wanted to do. And uh, that's really how I became a storyteller. So. Very interesting. So, it, so you learned the techniques of storytelling. Right. Because you wanted children to let their imaginations. Right, exactly. Well, what were some of your experiences in doing that? Uh, well, so at beginning, the children looked askance at me, like, where is this book? Mm -hmm. And I just explained to them that I would be telling them a story. And actually, I encouraged them to tell stories. Now, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not good at telling jokes. Um, I, I can't remember jokes. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so that wasn't something that came naturally to me, but somehow the idea of a story and learning the, just thinking about the story, how stories are. I mean, we have beginnings and we have middles and we have ends and there is a critical point, a turning point in a story. There's a conflict, there's a resolution. So actually, I began teaching that to fifth and sixth graders, being able to look at a story and um, kind of take this apart. Mm -hmm. And this is the bones of the story. This is where the story is going. Is it a linear story? Is it a circular story? And so um, I developed actually a storytelling contest with fifth and sixth graders. And everybody had to learn to tell a story. And they could use the folk tales. They, no, they weren't making up their stories because fifth and sixth graders, I'm never sure. But, but so okay. everybody had to read. So I had just tables and tables filled with various kinds of folk tales as well as children's stories. And um, we all told stories. And we, we did that for a couple of years in the school in which I was a librarian. So they would select a story. Mm -hmm. And then they, how, how would they get ready to tell, to right. tell the story? The same process that I went through in learning to tell okay. a story. So um, it wasn't memorization. It was um, reading the story many times aloud. Because when you tell something aloud is when you're really absorbing it. And um, I, so after reading silently, reading aloud and telling to somebody else, that, and then learning the beginning, the middle, and the end of a story, mm -hmm. understanding mm -hmm. if it was where it was going and what was going to happen. Um, 
And because my objective was pictures and imagination, so that my, it is my objective when I tell a story, that my words will make pictures in your mind. Okay. They won't be my pictures because I am telling from pictures, not from words. Mm -hmm. But your pictures will be your own pictures. And that's kind of how I brought these children along with me and just said, well, if you see um, a sunny day, what do you see? Describe this for me. What, what's happening in this story? And by help having them tell me what was happening, they were really learning the story. What kind of responses did you get from saying to s students, uh, we want you to do this aloud. You know, don't read it to yourself. Read it to yourself, but we want you to do it. Well, what, yeah. was their, what were the so reactions some, like? Some children are very good about that, but if both of us right. are in this task of learning to tell a story, then I can tell it to you, you can tell it to mm -hmm. me, and that's what I did. I paired them up where I put them into groups of three or four, and everybody had to do it. And so even those children who maybe would never get up in front of a group, which was another objective of mm -hmm. mine, mm -hmm. Um, to tell and because I had been telling them stories so they knew that you know and I, I know that I talk with my hands I'm feeling like I'm doing that now That's and all right. <laughs> so uh, I think I was their role model and uh, we did and so we did that and what I had those children do once they learned their stories and the one of the ways to uh, to learn story for me is to have to tell a story from beginning to end to write it down in 10 sentences mm -hmm. or less. So I had them do that exercise. Or I had them take a piece of paper and fold it and fold it so they had nine squares or eight squares and you had to draw a picture of what was happening in that story. So that was getting the story into their minds. And, yeah. and that's really the technique that I use myself. This sounds like this story. might be a a, a, slight, a different technique than they would experience in other classes. Exactly. Uh, and, and, exactly. And how did, how did that go? And did they... They were, they were fine about it because I was not the librarian perhaps that some people think of as librarians being... Um, I once had a principal say to me, oh, you're just a book pusher. But I wasn't okay. a book pusher. I was a person that was teaching values and teaching about literature and introducing children to how wonderful literature is and the places that it takes you. And the cultural part, I mean, that, that was also important to me. And it is important when I can tell a story that is based in China or based in Russia. Mm -hmm. or you're learning the culture of um, stories a, a, of the people because you know what they're wearing. You know what it's like when they walk down the street in the marketplace. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not going to Hannaford's or Shaw's. Right. So, that, so those were a lot of my objectives in getting these children to get involved in folk literature. How, how, did you, how was the parental response to it this approach? It was excellent. It was excellent. And what we did, because it was every fifth grader and every sixth grader had to do this. Mm -hmm. And then we had, they went to the kindergarten of the first and the second grades to tell their stories. So they would oh, go in okay. groups of three or four to tell their story. And so then we actually had an assembly program. So, so it was built were, in. It was built it, right it into It wasn't the, some activity someone was doing off here in the corner. No. It was it's built into the. Part the, of the curriculum. The life of the. Right. Of, of the school. Right. Right. Because libraries are connected to all of the classrooms in mm -hmm. a school mm -hmm. and, um, and that's how the library was. That was that was my whole thing about you know not making a library this room that you went to and that the teacher took the children to and dropped them off and then mm -hmm. came and picked them up. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted that library to be a very important the heart of the school because it has so much. It's so vital. Y you mentioned that uh, you encountered a, a storyteller. Can you tell a little bit about that? that it became really influential. Can okay. you tell a little bit about I that absolutely experience? Absolutely. I'm hoping that somebody knows Janine Laverty and will 
have some opportunity to hear her tell stories because that's how I got involved in it and that's how I learned the process of telling and mm -hmm. um, and then from there I actually took a sabbatical leave from school to go out as a storyteller and to develop myself to know what I could bring back to school when I came back and also to test that whole art of mm -hmm. storytelling. And so I went and told stories in organizations and nursing homes and in other libraries and in other schools. And I did, um, I did some residencies. I went into a school for five days and did with fifth graders in that school the same that I had done okay. with the fifth graders in my own school. And in the process of being with Janine Laverty and taking workshops, I also took a lot of workshops in, in storytelling classes essentially and with a lot of other adults learning to tell stories. What, what was it about her that, that hooked you? you know, I mean that kind of grabbed yeah. you and said I'm, I'm being pulled into something here. I think she answered for me the quest that I was on. Mm -hmm. She helped me to get into understanding um, how to tell and how magical it is because mm -hmm. stories are magical. Mm -hmm. I think it's like when we go to uh, elderly services okay. and we have someone who all of a sudden wants to tell their story, mm -hmm. that, that being, that putting it out there, um, while it's not a you know, formal type story right. or a folktale or anything like that, but it's, it's the thing that's coming from the heart and mm -hmm. the soul of that person. And that to me is what stories are. It, mm -hmm. it, whether they're folk tales or they're personal stories. Um, you know, that yeah. we're, we're putting ourselves out there. What, what, what's so. kind of amazing I, in that experience is that um, all of a sudden there'll be a laugh. <laughs> because because there's a good punchline. Yes. And I don't think the person who started, a lot of times, I, I don't think the person who started to tell this story had any idea what the punchline is going to be. Although I think a few have the punchline right. and they want to tell the story to get to the punchline. Right. You know. And, uh, but either way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, they, it's, it's, right. just, it's just exciting. It is exciting. And I think that's what it is. It's an, the excitement of stories. And the people who say, I don't have a story. Right. And, and they, 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 they pass. And we all say, by all means, you pass, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. because we, we emphasize how important listening is. In exactly. Fact, in fact, I think listening is the beginning of storytelling. I would agree. I, if you can't listen, you're not going to hear a story. That's right. Uh, so it, it's a great hour. It, it's a it, great it art, and I really enjoy sharing that time yeah. with you. And, uh, and that's really part of what I was teaching children also, to listen. Mm -hmm. you know, to be, and for me, it is a wonderful part of storytelling for me, is when I have a group, whether they're children or adults, in front of me, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I'm capturing them. I know that they're with me in this story. And they're going with me. And as I say, they, their pictures could be different than mine, are different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're going somewhere together. And um, I know where we're going to the end. But sometimes um, maybe they don't. And so it's a surprise. What was it like to make that switch from being the librarian who was working on the instruction and uh, the motivation with children to being a performer. What was that like for you? Um, it, at first it was, as it is I suppose for most people, I was very nervous. Mm -hmm. And before I would go out and do a storytelling gig, mm -hmm. um, I did have to do a lot of calming myself down. But now, it, well it still is because I haven't been doing it, but once I was really out there storytelling a lot, um, it became easier, but I did discover about myself that I must have always liked 
being in being a ham, if that's okay. what, the, what, this, what it is, you know. So, uh, so that wasn't in your childhood. It was not in my childhood. And, um, and I'm an only child, so I didn't have a lot of opportunities okay. of, within my home, people telling stories or having to deal with siblings. I yeah. was sort of, you know. I had four sisters. <laughs> and once the stories got started, somebody else would have a different interpretation uh -huh. of the story, and and, and it was it, it was quite a back and forth, mm -hmm. back and forth, mm -hmm. and then right. on top on this and right. uh, getting layered, and right. 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 and it was a lively time. Yes, and, I'm and sure. You, and you felt like you lost your story because <laughs> one of my. I, was I had one over. sister in particular who would take <laughs> over, and uh, so I had to get my story in quickly. Right. Um, right. So yeah, yeah, it was it was a different different kind of experience. So you see, I don't have that experience at all, and I have never felt that I, although I have written and I write and I've written a couple of minor stories, um, but I never feel that I could write a story and tell it. Mm -hmm. So going back into stories that are there already makes it very easy for me to find a story that speaks to me in some way mm -hmm. and then make it, you know, come in and make it my own and of course give credit to whomever it is that has written the story. And there's so many wonderful children's stories and uh, children's authors, mm -hmm. uh, in particular Jane Yolen. I love Jane Yolen's stories. I've told um, with permission, I've actually written to her and gotten permission from her to tell some of the stories that she's written. What, what would she um, tell us stories about? Can you just give us uh, well, examples so or two? A lot of them are uh, from different lands, culture, cultural mm -hmm. stories. Um, two that just come off the top of my head. Um, one is called The Seventh Mandarin, and it um, tells a story of a, the a Mandarin who, um, who has guards that have to guard his kite at night and fly it, hmm. and something happens. And it's, you know, stories um, couch the truth. Mm -hmm. So in this particular story, this young boy has to tell the truth of what happens to the Mandarin, and it's kind of a contradiction to the Mandarin's way of thinking. So this person needs a lot of courage to tell the truth. And I think that's what stories, that, that, that's what it is in stories, that mm -hmm. um, folk tales in particular, there is learning to be brave, there is courage in a lot of different ways, um, obtaining that ability to not be afraid to take that next step. Mm -hmm. To not be afraid to find out who you are or to express yourself. Um, you know, think, if you think about how many different Cinderella's there are, you know, the Cinderella that we know, the one that is not so nice about cutting off the heel of the sister to get the shoe in, but not everybody tells it that way. No. There's an Egyptian Cinderella, there's a Native American Cinderella. So those um, themes in folk literature, I think, are just universal. We learn how to um, find our way. And I remember that Bruno Bettelman said that children need to hear stories that are not always so wonderful, happy places, mm -hmm. because then they learn in the story how you can deal with fear mm -hmm. and overcome it mm -hmm. because stories teach us good versus evil. Um, they teach us um, how we can be kind to others. Um, they solve problems. There's mm -hmm. always a conflict in a story and there's a resolution that happens and we learn about that. Maybe it's not always the way we thought it should be but then we learn how to deal with that. So for me, folk literature and that type of storytelling are so rich. And I also got very involved in Jewish storytelling. Um, and I went to places and heard Jewish storytellers and those stories 
um, resonated to me because that's my background. And so, mm -hmm. again, I found a place within me that I didn't know I had. Do, so. do you, um, when you tell, or say, a Jewish story, uh, would, would you attempt to do the accent or would you attempt to do certain gestures that would gestures be... Gestures probably come easily to me. It's probably innate. Right. And I, I would only do um, a dialect if it was important to the story, that um, sing-song kind of uh, thing with that Jewish, you know, if, it, if you want to do it or, you know, one of those if it was important mm -hmm. to the story. But if it comes naturally to me, it's there. It's not something that I am um, learning to do or putting on a way to do it. Right. Okay. So. So, so, uh, the um, I, I know I one of the things I'd like to do with stories is make sounds, uh, and uh, I find uh, I don't do that as much as I really would like to. And I like do the duck. Uh -huh. And do uh, uh, so. Uh, I would be inclined to want to do that. So, well, and sometimes, yeah. certainly, if you're telling stories to children, that's the that's fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you know, if a somebody is coming and <laughs> well, you want to add that, right? Or um, if mm -hmm. the cows moo, and, mm -hmm. you know, because then you're getting the audience to go with you mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. with children. So it depends upon where you're going. But I love telling stories. To children, but I love telling stories to adults because adults think don't don't always think about storytelling as something that they want to participate in. So I love it when I can get adults to and tell good stories to them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where are the places where stories are, are being told, and and that would encourage your 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 vision of. of adults and children. Well, certainly in adult organizations, you know, historical societies, there are wonderful stories out there that mm -hmm. historical societies. In, in fact, there are stories, there are some storytellers that are going out to businesses <coughs> and telling, now I'm not doing that, but that is a place. Senior citizens, of course, mm -hmm. um, and libraries. I mean, libraries have adults come to libraries, book groups. Yeah. So I, yeah, religious organizations, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, what do you think we uh, we learned from from stories? Uh, when I was a k uh, kid, one of the warnings that my mother would would give me would be, "Are you telling a story?" And what she meant was, "Were you are you fibbing? <laughs> uh -huh. Are you telling the, the truth?" So. I kind of grew up with some hesitation about stories myself. I mean, although I've, uh, because of that. Um, so, are we are we encouraging each other to tell stories? Sure, we are. Yeah. Because we're using our imaginations, right? I mean, if, if you're telling a, even when you, I don't know, telling a fib, but there's some truth in it. Is mm -hmm. there not? I mean, yeah. you're finding a way to say what happened. Perhaps it didn't happen exactly that way, but you're still using your imagination and you're putting out some visuals, and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's what storytelling is. Yeah. So uh, I don't think you should ever be afraid. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's encouraging. <laughs> yes. Okay. Right. Uh, what uh, What do you think um, people learn from story? If you come to a storytelling evening, what, what, what's, what's the takeaway for, for people? I mean, I, if, you oh. go to, if you go to Bach, an evening of Bach music or so forth, there's different kinds. Or if you go to a rock concert, there's a different well, in, in those kind of two, takeaway. In those two instances, what you're doing is relating. You're relating to the music mm -hmm. that you know. Mm -hmm. If you go to a storytelling, you're relating in some way to whatever that story is. Mm -hmm. So it's still, you're taking away something that you can relate to. And, and, and you're taking away something from within the contemporary time, but you also are, are bringing part of the history back, for example, particularly the folk, the, the folk stories and right. the, uh, 
um, and, and all of that that becomes part of learning history that's as right. well. That's right. Yeah. And in the traditions, I mean, your Jewish traditions, you're taking uh, something back into. If you're doing, um, if you're hearing a, a Russian story, you're take, you might have some connection to uh, Russian people and hearing something about them or mm -hmm. the way they're dressed or what they're doing or what their life was like at that time of the story. So you're always connecting in some way, I think. Mm -hmm. are, are there some thoughts you've had about um, how the world would be a better place if we could get more people to tell stories? Oh, I think that would be wonderful because we would be speaking to each other instead of only doing technological mm -hmm. speaking, which isn't yes. really connecting yeah. at all. So when we can have a group of people sitting in front of us and we can be then talking to them or with them, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. you know, we, mm -hmm. we shouldn't lose the art of conversation. So we gather people. Right. Yeah. Right. I, 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 someone, I don't know who said this, but you know, gather the people, tell the stories, and eat the food. <laughs> Wonderful. I, and I think, I think that would be a, 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 a perfectly good motto for, for how all of our life should be lived. That's you know? right. I think, I think that, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. We're, yes. we're, it's, the time goes so fast. It does go fast. Uh, so we're kind of winding down. Is there some last things you might want to say and uh, about storytelling? And um, I would say to anybody that has a chance to hear any storyteller, they should go and do that because everyone is a storyteller and that will just encourage anybody to go and tell your own story. There is, um, there is a children's story about a boy who tells stories and then starts telling them over and over again and the children say, oh, you know, you've told us that and he has to go out and search for new stories. And he finds a, a story snail that is, tells him he has to do certain tasks and uh, find a secret password and the password is Fuzz Buzz Once There Was. Hmm. And so Fuzz Buzz Once There Was a boy who needed to find stories and he went out into the so, you know, once there was a man who was telling stories at elderly services and discovered that. Mm -hmm. So that's really what stories are, you know. On that note, we, we thank you for coming. Thank and, you. And uh, you've reinforced the fact that the story matters. Everybody's story Everyone's matters. Everyone's story does matter. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay.